Well, hey, what's up guys, Garrett here. In this video, we're gonna be doing something more so with the usual of what I do on this channel, which is actually showing you how to do something specific. Now, I hope you guys have been liking my working on DevGrub videos, got more of that stuff coming soon. But in this video, as you can probably tell from the title down below, I thought it was up there. It used to be up there a while, a while back. But we are going to, we are going to be using NGINX and DigitalOcean to create a subdomain off of our website. And you can make as many of these as you want, granted that your server can handle it. So I'm not sure if you can do this if you have like shared hosting like HostGator or GoDaddy, but if you have your own dedicated server or your own virtual uh, dedicated server, then you will be able to do this. You don't have to have DigitalOcean. I just like DigitalOcean a lot because they're really inexpensive. Um, and if you are interested in hosting, you don't have it yet. This video is not sponsored, but you can click my referral link down below and you can get free hosting for two months up to $100. The cheapest option they have is $5 a month. So it's very, very affordable. All right, so let's get started. So here I have my personal website, garrettlove.com. I set this up from scratch using NGINX and it works really, really well. I've been learning NGINX recently and I, I really do love it. So the first thing we wanna do is, you know, we have all these different pages here, but let's say that we, we have a blog. I mean, I don't have a blog on here. I have home, work, about, and contact. But let's say that I wanna add a blog and I don't want it to be garrettlove.com slash blog. No, that's not, that doesn't exist. I want it to be blog, whoops, blogs.garrettlove.com. But if we go to that right now, it doesn't exist. And so, my hosting provider is, uh, my internet provider is Verizon. They have a standard, we could not find that, uh, that website, sorry, right? They have their standard page. So the first thing that we can do to have a subdomain here is we're gonna go to DigitalOcean, we're gonna go to our networking tab. Now go to, if you're not using DigitalOcean, go to wherever your, um, wherever your, your records live and we will go to garrettlove.com. We now have all of the records and we will go and set up um, blog. And you can see what it comes up and is down here. It's blog.garrettlove.com, right? Now we're gonna go to point to that droplet, which a droplet is a server. We will create the record. We will let that sit there. That should be created now. So we should be ready to start doing stuff with DigitalOcean. Um, or with the NGINX stuff. So if I go here, nothing happens still. And that's because we're going to this, we're going to our website, but NGINX doesn't actually know, hey, you know, take, take this request and direct it somewhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our nginx.conf file, right? That's right here. And we're gonna go down to our server context. And what we're gonna be doing is basically making a new server context. Now a context, is basically a group of stuff that pertains to one thing. So um, we have up here, we have the events context, we have the HTTP context, we're gonna be inside of there, inside of the server context. And a server is basically, if you've ever used Apache, this is a virtual host, or it's called in Nginx, a server block. So basically this is a way that you can have multiple websites running on one server instead of having to say, oh, you know, I have my personal website, then I have my business website. I need to have, you know, let's say two different servers for one of them. So that'd be $10 a month. If you're on DigitalOcean, and you're using the least expensive one. No, you don't have to do that. You can use Nginx, set up a few server blocks and have as in theory, as many, uh, um, as many websites running on the same server. Now there are constraints to that. There are limits because you know, there is a physical limit to the server in terms of what it can handle performance wise, how many connections it can handle. That's a totally different story beyond the scope of this video. But nevertheless, um, in theory, you could host as many server, uh, server blocks as you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a new server block and we will inside of here, basically I'm kind of just redoing what's here essentially, right? And then we'll have to do something else after, but we're gonna type in listen and we'll be listening on port 80. Um, port 80 is for HTTP. If you're using HTTPS, you would have port 443, 443. That's the port for HTTPS. And then add a semicolon, that's important. Don't forget to do that. Now for the root, uh, this is basically gonna be where on your server, 
things are stored. So when a user requests this, this server, right, this is going to be um, where the files, where, the, where Nginx looks for the files to serve to that user. So if you're not using DigitalOcean, this might not pertain to you. You, will, you may have to go find uh, where your hosting provider has these files. But if you are using DigitalOcean, you can just follow right along and this should work fine. Now we're gonna have www. Dot, let's see, it'll be dot blog dot garrett love dot com, and then inside of that we'll have an HTML uh, folder. Next, we need to have the server name. Now this is kind of fun. This is the actual location um, that people can go to. So if you had example.com, you would type in example.com. So whatever the URL is, whatever the domain name is of your other website that you're trying to host, you'd put that in here. Uh, I'm using subdomains. You don't have to use subdomains. You can definitely use a legitimate domain. If you had garrettlove.com was one of those things and then you had, um, you know, I don't know, chucknorris.com, you could put that in here. I'm just doing a subdomain so that I don't have to go and buy another domain to show you how to do this but it will work just the same. And we can do www, actually we didn't set up a record for www, so that won't work. Um, we can skip the access log. That's just to have a specific log for this server instead of using the main Nginx log. Doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make it not work or work. It's just a configuration preference and setting. Next is the index. So when they go to blog.garrettlove.com, what is the index file? And in our case, it will be index.html. The next thing is the location. Now the location is kind of cool because within your server block, so within your domain name, you could have different stuff inside of that server. So let's say I had, you know, you know, garrettlove.com slash app one. So you'd have to go there. And then garrettlove.com slash app two, you'd have to go there, right? So that's a really cool way to kind of do that, right? So we can have, um, our location is gonna be just slash because I don't actually want you to have to go to garrettlove.com or blog.garrettlove.com slash blog. That wouldn't really make any sense. We just want garrett, blog.garrettlove.com. So we're gonna do that. And then inside of here, we will do try files. And this basically is the simplest that we can do this. It will work and that's what we're going for here. So, uh, if we now have, we will have, let's say this URI. So that's a variable, a built-in variable that gets the URI, which is, I believe anything past the slash. So there's that. Um, also try URI slash. And then the last one, right? Same thing is up here is uh, URI.html. So try and serve any files that are called either just what the URI is URI with a slash at the end of it or URI.html. Now I happen to know it's gonna be just URI slash HTML, but this is something that's good to have just in case. That's actually the default setting when you're in DigitalOcean. If you don't configure this yourself and you just use the tutorial that DigitalOcean has, this is the configuration that you will get. Um, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna set a 404 just in case that can't be found at all. We wanna redirect you to the 404 and it'll just be, I believe, the normal um, uh, the engine X 404. Now this should be done. So what we can do now is I'm using Cyberduck right here and I have my configuration stuff, not there. That's the wrong place. So we'll come down here to engine X, uh, configuration and all of our engine X stuff that we need lives in this. So it'll be dot, uh, ETC slash or slash etc slash nginx and this is the file right here that we're actually editing on on my computer so what we're going to do is we're going to go over to my finder and we'll just drag this over to here on my other screen it asks me if i want to override it i'm going to say yes the other thing that we have to do is we have to reload um we have to reload nginx so i'm going to clear this over here I'll bring this over there. We're gonna to connect to this, my password. I'm just gonna put that in. This works. And now what we can do here is this command, sudo, if you're using your own user and you have um, set up 
to have root access or admin privileges basically you'll do sudo this is again not part of this video you can find a really easy tutorial online if you're using DigitalOcean for how to set up a um an administrator like i don't know if it's root level but administrator user um for ubuntu which is the server the operating system that i have installed on my server so i'm going to reload this type in my password again it has an error let's check this out we will do sudo nginx test and then we have unknown variable url let's see uh indeed here i have url it should be uri let's just look over to make sure that everything else looks good and i think it does let's drag this back asks me if i want to override it i do let's go back to the terminal do this again problem solved also just to show you that it does work now that's good now here's the thing we didn't do one thing so i don't believe this will actually go to where we want it to go. Or it might, but it's, I think, just going to give us an issue. In fact, it does, 404 not found. But you can see that this is now where we were going before, same place, blog.garrettlove.com. And instead of being directed to the Verizon, can't find this page, this is now our server. So the next thing we have to do is go on our server, back into the root level. We're going to go to var, then www. And now in here, we are going to make a new folder called blog garrettlove.com and then inside of that folder we will have a nope that's not what i wanted we're going to have another file but we're going to go and create that file this will be um it'll just be index so what we're going to do is on my finder inside of here we're going to create a new folder say blog dot oh just blog actually that's fine and we'll clean that up just because I'm OCD and I like things to be clean. Awesome. Now what we will do is we will go back to VS Code. We now have this. We'll create a new file. We'll call it index.html. We'll go and copy this index.html. Even Actually, you know what? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to go and copy this because this is going to look more of like the blog that we want it to be. We will get rid of this. We will call this blog just so you can see there is a difference. Uh, we will change this to not be in the center and we'll have this here, bring that over a little bit. We can get rid of this and say that this would be actually, we'll change that to be H five. I know this is not really engine X stuff, but I didn't have this planned out ahead of time. So we'll just say widget one. Um, hold on, we'll do a div around here just to make it look kind of nice. We'll have card and then inside of here, no, whoops, div card body. And then this will bring up there. We'll now add a few of these. This might not even be right, but it doesn't really matter if it is or isn't right because what I know is that it will work. And that's really what we want to happen. <clears throat> okay, now this is gonna be two. This is going to be three and we can leave this the way it is. This has to be column four unless that or else that won't work. Now what we're going to do, we will come back to Cyberduck, back to the finder. We will come over to here. We will drag this in. We don't have to override anything. And let's take a look and see what happens. So it didn't work. Interesting. I don't think it's inside of an HTML folder. So what we can do is create a new folder called html drag this in there yes i want to move that and we will now do that and we do have to set this in there so in general yes the reason that that didn't work is because the path was wrong um we're gonna go here we will go back to get the conf we'll go back to the home page and if we go back to etc or whatever that stands for come down here to nginx and then just drag this on over. I do want to override that. We also have to reload it. Now we'll come back here, go over to here. It still doesn't work. Why does it not work? Good question. Is there an error? No, there's not. 
Okay, so I found the problem. Here it is. What we have to do is basically in this path, it has to be an exact path, not a relative path. So we have to add a slash in front of the var. That's very important. Now we'll come over here and we'll go back. Did I save this? I did. We'll go back there, drag this back in, come over here on my second monitor, hit continue. And now what we will do is go to the terminal, reload nginx, which basically is an awesome way to basically reload everything without having to restart nginx you can also restart it that's another option but if you restart it you will have downtime versus if you reload it you won't have any downtime so we now hit that and boom we've got a blog so we can go here not have a blog right that's the normal page we can also go to blog.garrylove.com and there it is it works beautifully right so that's pretty cool pretty awesome and that's how you can really really easily add a server block aka a virtual host to Nginx and have multiple uh, server or multiple domains being hosted off of the same server or just have subdomains off of your main domain on the same server. So my link down below for DigitalOcean if you guys wanna use DigitalOcean, otherwise you should be able to use any other hosting provider that allows you to have like root access and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so if you guys are also interested, I will have this code up on DevGrub as a recipe. I'm gonna add it there right now. Hope you guys will check it out and, uh, subscribe and uh, join the site and uh, maybe post some of your own recipes as you guys are coding as well. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.